Good evening. Uh, call this meeting to order. Uh, would you please stand for the flag salute? Your name stands for a prayer. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Bless us, bless us, Lord, as we gather today for this freeholder meeting. Guide our minds and hearts to may work together for the good of our community. Help us to be generous in our outlook, courageous in the face of difficulty, and wise in our decisions. Amen. Amen. Take the slides at the open public meeting act. This is to announce adequate notice of this meeting has been provided. Also, pursuant to the 2019 bylaws, rules, and regulations of the Board of Chosen Freeholders of the County of Burlington, the time shall be set aside on the agenda for receipt of public comments. Public comments will be received with respect to agenda items prior to board consideration of resolutions to be adopted. An additional opportunity for public comment will occur later in the meeting. Public comment shall be limited to five minutes per speaker. Unused time may not be transferred to another speaker. Persons may speak once per comment, public comment period. I direct the deputy clerk to enter into the minutes of this meeting this public announcement in advance written notice of this meeting. Freeholder Hobson? Here. Freeholder O'Connell? Here. Freeholder Singh? Uh, here. Freeholder Kyber? Here. Director Porian? Here. This time I'll be looking for the approval of the minutes of regular meeting of May 22nd, 2019, and the conference meeting of May 22nd, 2019. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? The director, I'm going to abstain from both of them. Ayes have it. Uh, we're now going to move on to recognition for the evening. Uh, recognition for Immigrant Heritage Month. I'll turn this over to Freeholder Deputy Director Singh. Thank you, Director. Uh, so June is uh, nationally in the U.S. recognized as Immigrant Heritage Month. We are a country of immigrants. I wanted to keep up with the state. Uh, New Jersey legislature is doing a resolution and all around <coughs> other states doing it. Um, thankful of Senator Singleton, Assemblyman Conway, and Assemblyman uh, Woman Murphy of also passing a resolution on the state uh, state level. And uh, we are joining the state and also recognizing the contributions in terms of economic, social, and the cultural uh, vibration of our county. Uh, I'm going to make it on the record. Um, thank the freeholders in, in terms of supporting this resolution. And uh, I hope uh, we all take a moment this month to reflect on our immigrant roots. Um, and one way or the other, uh, there was somebody that kind of crossed over the sea. And uh, I hope we all are reflective of that. It's just a matter of time somebody got on the boat 100 years ago and somebody got on the boat last year. Thank you. Thank you. Public comment on agenda items. We move to the public comment on agenda items at this point in the meeting. Public comment is limited to items on tonight's agenda. Anyone who wishes to speak on any other topic will have a chance in the public comment section later in the meeting. Please note that this is a public comment and your opportunity to provide us with input and feedback. It's not a question and answer form. Uh, each speaker may only come up once per public comment portion. Um, you have a sign in list? Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, John M. Uh, Colucci. My apologies. I had thought that that was a sign-in sheet, but I would like to thank you all for the ability to be the advisory service of my board. Thank you. I just want you to know, Chief, that I follow orders here. <laughs> Is there anybody that wants to talk on an agenda item? Okay. Carol Melvin Springfield, age 22, 23, 24, 25, 29, and 30. They're a little bit separate. I'm going to start actually with age 25. Uh, if there's dead trees on a county road, who do we contact to notify the county that the tree needs to come down? You can notify our PI office and he will contact. You'll do that? Okay. Uh, and then for 22 and 23 uh, and 24, obviously there's uh, money, same thing actually for 29 and 30. 
There's money if you put in for it. You just have to apply for the grant money. That's all I'm asking you is to apply for grant money. Thanks, Carol. Um, anything else on the agenda item? Okay. <clears throat> Seeing none, I'll close this portion of public comment. Now we'll move on to our resolutions. I would like to make a motion that we approve resolutions H1 through H21 by unanimous consent. Second. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions? Freeholders same. Thank you, Director. I'd like to move uh, resolutions H22 to H25 by unanimous consent. Second. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Extensions? <coughs> Freeholder Hobson? Thank you, Director. I'd like to move H26 through H28 28, uh, with unanimous consent. Second. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Freeholder O'Connell? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Director. I'd like to move resolutions H30 through 32 by unanimous consent. Thank you. H29. H29. Okay. Yes, I got you. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, at this time, nomination and election for the Board of Social Services. At this time, I would like to place the name of Harriet L. Cohen for consideration on the Board of Social Services for a five-year term to expire on June 11, 2024. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, and I'll declare nominations closed. Aaron, roll, roll call, please. Freeholder Hobson. Harriet Cohen. Freeholder O'Connell. Harriet Cohen. Freeholder Singh. Harriet Cohen. Freeholder Tiber. Harriet Cohen. Director Foley. Harriet Cohen. Okay, this is a long one, so. Appointments by Director, Youth Services Advisory Council. At this time, I'll be making appointments to the Youth Services Advisory Council for a one-year term to expire on December 31st, 2019, Richard Lucella, Rochelle Coleman, Gregory Lambard, Todd Worth, Scott Kofina, Jay Kessler, Marianne Furphy, Barbara Bigley, Daryl Minus Vincent, Charles Nagy, Charlotte Thompson, Mike, or excuse me, <coughs> Charlotte Simpson, Mike Snyder, Lynn Arnieri, Daniel Blank, Misty Weiss, Elfrieda Francis, Kelly West, Joe Conlon, Leficia Green, James Condianani, Elizabeth Dunlap, Deborah Kennedy, Dr. Amy Dean, Sigha Musso, Jennifer Sikaken, uh, Trina Jackson, Laura Wall, and Ryan Pesolt. Good, okay. Appointments by Director of the Transportation Advisory Committee. This time I'll be making appointments to the Transportation Advisory Committee for a one-year term to expire on December 31st, 2019. Samuel J. Koditz, <coughs> Dini Todd, James Ho, Laverne Cholowa, John C. Brodowski, Cheryl Simpson, Amy Barra, Jennifer Heros, Evelyn Rosado, Lisa Tully, Charles San Filippo, Jeff Haynes, Kelly West, Todd Worth, Stephen Considine, Dale Keith, Chris Smith, and Steve Williams. Next, I have appointments um, to the Emergency Services Advisory Board. This time, I'll be making appointments to the Emergency <laughs> Service Advisory Board for a one-year term to expire on December 31st, 2019. Brian Bozar, William T. Eliason, Stephen Ent, George Jackson, Dan Norman, Jamie Wood, Anthony Burnett, John C. Colucci, Craig Farnsworth, Gary Guppy, and Gene DeFilippo. I would like to turn it over to Freeholder Director, uh, Deputy Director Singh for recognition. Thank you, Director. Thank you uh, to the Chiefs uh, for coming in on a, a short notice. Uh, we have certification, uh, certification of appreciation. So I would like to invite everyone to uh, come to the front 
uh, so we can recognize you for stepping up and volunteering uh, at accounting board. Uh, your expertise, I know our director and the deputy director, uh, Gabi and uh, in the flip are really appreciative that you are stepping up and helping them out and making sure our county is always prepared to tackle an emergency situation. Let me do one at a time. Let's see. Chief Boats are of Florence. He's in the back there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and our Chief Burnett. Thank you. Thank you. I met you many, many times and finally I get to actually recognize you for your service too. Uh, Koji. You were <laughs> Yes. <laughs> you are can make a lot of comments now. <laughs> and our Deputy Director right here. Lapao. Chief Elison is not able to make it today. We just got a call, and Chief Ent, right there. Thank you. And um, Farnsworth. Thank you. W director, right here. Thank you. And um, George Jackson. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Norman, Chief Norman. Thank you. And Jim is not able to make it. Okay. Um, you can come this way. <laughs> On behalf of the county, foremost, uh, thank you for everything that you do um, for your own towns. But also, I know in your profession, you're always stepping up and answering calls uh, in boundaries beyond your town. That's really how we kind of work in the county. Um, as a county, I know our public safety department is deeply involved in making sure that we communicate well to your needs and we're able to attend to your needs and you're also able to inform us. Um, part of the committee, and now we have it with all the three disciplines equally represented, is for our vision is to make sure that we are attending to the needs. Um, and that's how we put it out and we really are appreciative of you individually stepping up but your, to your associations uh, to uh, giving us your names. Uh, and it's a volunteer job on top of the gazillion other things that you want your commitments you have. Um, we look forward to having our first uh, meeting uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, and Director Gabi will reach out about that, and then we'll go from there on any way we can help you. Director, you want to make any remarks? I'd just like to say thank you for everybody, because you're going to dedicate a lot of time and energy to it, so it's all good. we got a good, uh, good group here, and I know we'll work well together. Okay. Anybody else have anything else to say? <laughs> you good? You good? <laughs> 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 now, I would use a different picture now, it's fine. Okay, do you want to join? You want to come to the front? <laughs> so you, no, no, I'm sorry, sorry, it's fine. I just... <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you, Director, for making it all happen. Thank you, sir. On the non-agenda items, once again, I would like to note that this is a public comment. This is not a question and answer form. Additionally, each speaker may only come up once per public comment portion. Okay. Michael Tam. Did I pronounce that right? A few months back, when you were talking about the budget and approving it, it seemed to be the most important thing in your mind was, and the public at that time, was cutting taxes. 
and it sounds like election time when you say cutting taxes. That shouldn't be your primary goal. The primary thing should be making sure every dollar that you get from the taxpayers of Burlington County, that you put it to good use and it gets 100% back of services for the people of Burlington County. And there's many ways of doing that. You should be reducing taxes, not cutting taxes. Because I've seen in local government and county government in my time over the years throughout New Jersey, where different local governments and county governments cut taxes. But in the process, they're cutting services or hurting services for the people of their county or their town. And that is not the proper thinking. The proper thinking is to make sure that there's no waste at all on everything. And it is a few things you should be looking at. Recycling is great. It's a great system they have over there. It costs, what, $18 million. I think it needs a review. It needs a review to find out whether they have sufficient personnel, whether the personnel are trained sufficiently, whether they have sufficient supervisor, whether they're trained, and then go into the equipment. Is the equipment sufficient at this time? Or does that need to be changed? You need to do a motion and time study also over there. Because that's a big ticket item in your budget. And it's a big ticket item for everybody in the county, every municipality in the county. It should be looked at. Also, when it comes to maintenance of vehicles, most of it's outsourced today. It's not done in-house. Uh, I believe it's not done in-house like it was for many years. I think that should be reviewed too, because possibly you may be wasting more money than what you think you're saving. Also, when vehicles are outsourced to be repaired, it usually takes longer. So that means your county employees don't have what they need to do the work for uh, while they're waiting for a vehicle to be repaired. I think you should review that. Just recently, there was an election. Well, I mail, I vote by mail. Got a ballot and sent it back in on voted. A week and a half later, I get another ballot in the mail. And then, about two weeks before election, I get another ballot. Those ballots cost money, the mailing costs money. It's a simple thing, but this has been going on for years. It's not something new that just occurred. This has happened prior to this year. Um, and it's a waste. There is waste here, there's waste there, and everything else. And traditionally, when freeholders or council people or committee people look at budgets, they got a sheet in front of them, they look at nothing. Oh, we could cut here a few dollars, cut here a few dollars. That's not the answer. The answer is reviewing everything before budget time, going over it, and thinking outside the box. Not that this has been done for 10 years and it works. It may work, but things change, and if you could make changes, it's fine. And I don't mean eliminating employees. Eliminating employees is not the answer. There's waste. There's waste in contracts and everything else. In the last 10 years, there's been many overruns in contracts in the county. Also, professionals. Professionals earn a fee. They deserve what they earn. But the thing about it is, it comes out that there should be review on many aspects of where money is being spent in the county. And that's one way of reducing taxes, not cutting taxes and cutting services, but reducing them and get 100% of what the taxpayers pay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lee Schneider. Schneider, 611 Broad Street. <coughs> Good evening. I am here to make a plea to you, the Board of Chosen Freeholders that represent the taxpayers of Burlington County. And that is to keep the RCBC pool in Pepperdine open as long as possible. Its use is invaluable to the swim community, of which there are hundreds. This beautiful pool is used for, for swim teams, swimming lessons, and it's also used to, to instruct first aid responders. 
with the Mount Laurel campus seriously bursting at the seams in regards to development, let alone the, the traffic and parking nightmare, I feel all the more strong in suggesting that this pool remain open until it is purchased in the future and to put this on the November ballot as a referendum so that the taxpayers can decide the fate of this long-standing aquatic institution. I'm submitting this photo that was taken last this past weekend to show the glory of this aquatic paradise that we all um, that we all treasure, and I really hope you reconsider. And this <coughs> photo I took on Saturday, it's beautiful, it should not be taken down or shut down, and this is for, for the board to reconsider, please. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, Carol, are you up again? Yep. Okay. Carol Melman Springfield, I'd like to thank Ms. Freeholder Hobson and Freeholder O'Connell for meeting with me this afternoon. I would like to say that it's been a year and a half since this board was made aware that saving the pool and saving the Pemberton campus is an issue of concern to many county citizens. Um, unfortunately, I still maintain that this board has done little to nothing on this issue since it was first brought up. I'm hoping that that changes. And I'm asking you again today to form an advisory committee today. Start the process today to get an advisory committee on the best way to save this pool. It's disappointing to know that I know more information about saving the pool, funding for the pool, funding for the campus than this board and its professionals. And I don't think that's right. Let's get an advisory committee today, together today and find out if it is feasible to save the campus and the pool. There's no reason in everybody flapping their gums all the time if it turns out that it's not economically feasible. I have been made aware since I spoke with the free elders Hobson and O'Connell today that other counties do have active recreation. So this county would not be leading the way having active recreation, it would be following other counties. I will get a list together of what those counties are and what their active recreation is. Because again, more information to make an informed decision. <coughs> We are now at 1,287 signatures asking for that pool and that campus to be saved. 1,287 Burlington County. We've tried to keep that petition in Burlington County. So I don't think that's an insignificant number. If you want me to print it out, I'd rather not kill the trees. But I can if that's what you guys want to see. Or I can direct you to the petition. And you can read the comments that people have posted. That's 1,287. The number goes up. Right now it's incremental, but hopefully it's going to start advancing again. We, have, we are trying to reach out to the base to find out if the base will support us. Tomorrow, a young man that I've been swimming with is trying out for the Navy SEALs. And the other man that, is, that has been working out with me will be trying out later this year for Navy SEALs. So this is supporting our military, our incoming military, our veterans who swim there to keep the base pool open. It supports our emergency service personnel who train in that pool, state police, fire, not to mention our own high school swimmers. Did I mention their parents pay taxes? Not to mention our high school swimmers and all the children who learn how to swim there in addition to all the water safety instruction that goes on there and the seniors who use the pool. I might also add it is east of Route 206, which seems to be the dividing line between that area that gets services and that area that does not. East of 206 has very little in the way of county services. West of 206, lots, including the park system. So again, I will ask you, I know you cannot move today unless the freeholder director permits it, to create an advisory committee. We have two months before the pool is set to shut. The, camp, the uh, college is doing an RFP walkthrough next Tuesday. We're again trying to seek proposals since they got zero proposals on their last endeavor. I'm asking you to be free leaders. Thank you. Um, I may pronounce this wrong, I'm sorry. Uh, Tony Quinto. Good evening. My name is Tony Quinto, and I live in Columbus. This is my daughter, Sophie. Um, 
she wanted to say something, but then she just told me she's not going to talk, so I'll talk for her. Um, the last time I was in this building was over 10 years ago when I led an effort at Mansfield Township to pursue and ultimately win a grant from the county, which we're eternally grateful for, that we used to construct an amazingly successful 6,000 square foot indoor training facility located on 206 northbound. Um, our objective then has become a reality, which was to build a facility to improve the local recreation program that can be leveraged by others that will become financially sufficient. Um, and I, I bring that up not to brag, not for any other reason, but as a segue to the reason why I'm here tonight, um, which is because of my daughter Sophie. And uh, she's been participating in the swim program that the uh, Carol just discussed for the, over five years um, and is now um, one of the swimmers on the Aqua Barons program. Um, and I can't believe that the county would allow such a successful, impactful facility to close on August 15th. I understand it's a big issue. It's not an inexpensive issue. It's probably a hundred times as complex as the one that took me five years with the Recreation Committee and Township to build in Columbus. Um, however, given the fact that there are hundreds of kids, students, professionals that service, I believe, 40,000 visitors a year, I got to believe there's a way to, to make it happen. And it sounds like the timeline's fairly short. Um, given the large demand for facilities that support both recreation and paid sports programs that I've been fairly exposed to over the past nearly 19 years since my oldest is almost 19, um, we're really missing the boat. There's a tremendous opportunity to take an existing thriving program to a much higher level. I bring my daughter to Monroe for basketball tournaments and it's packed seven days a week and it's a profitable facility. We lack that in the country, we lack it in the state, and we lack it in this county. I can't imagine the potential that's there that's going to be shut down as a result of what sounds to me a lack of partnership with our officials, which is very disappointing. Um, I know that this issue has been brought to the committee before. Um, I signed a petition myself, apparently I'm one of nearly 1,300 signatures, and I'm here to just offer my help, and hopefully you feel that this is an important issue that you would be willing to reciprocate and work together with the community, and at the end result is, this doesn't make sense. Uh, I, I think most people would agree that it doesn't make sense. Um, so my question is, uh, is there an opportunity for the community to work with the freeholders? If so, I'm willing to participate. Um, I understand that a cost was provided to the committee at some point, um, or the, the freeholders in the past 12 months, as to what it would cost to take that burden on. Um, I'm interested to know what that was. Um, so, as a as conclusion, um, before the end of the night, I'll send each of you an email from the address that used to be posted on the website that was recently taken down, apparently. So there's only one address for each of you, but I believe I have one for you independently from a saved email from a long time ago. So I'll try to get something to you with what I said today, along with the questions that I'm asking, and the hopes that we can maybe get together and figure this thing out. Thanks. Thank okay. Mr. Bracey. Uh, good evening. I've prepared my notes so I can speak within the five minute time allotment on uh, October 6, 2017, there was an article in the Burlington County Times entitled, County to Target Violent Crime. The Enough is Enough Safe Streets Initiative will use up to $15,000 in criminal for for forfeiture funds for the program. Since that program, there have been at least four murders, drive-by gang-related murders, in the targeted areas that were identified, such as Burlington, uh, Beverly, Pemberton Township, Bloom Grove, and Mount Holly. Uh, you're aware of my use of risk program. Uh, I don't have to address that really at this point. 
I've been a tireless advocate of the educational, social, and political progressive people first change in Burlington County for over 50 years. As I approach 71, I've accepted, given who and what I am, I will never be understood. It's no never mind to me in that in my life, I will be evaluated based on my legacy of good works in Burlington County, which are clearly noted. Doty's Way Youth at Risk 3 to 15 program is my final tribute to my departed mother, Doris Marie Doty Wright Gracie, who was a former director of nursing and a director of nursing programs at Button, Buttonwood Hospital, who at one, which at one time was Burlington County Psychiatric Hospital. She later became the executive director of the County of Burlington Health Department visiting nursing, nursing programs. I'm encouraged by free older director Pullman, and I believe you deeply care, Tom. Support of my program, but we can implement a modified version of my program at Burlington County Special Services. Middle schools program 2019 uh, extended school year program targeting youth 8 to 12 enrolled in this summer program who have been deemed at risk 8 to 12 from Browns Mills, Pemberton, Mount Holly, Willingboro, where I coached and taught for 20 years, City of Burlington, where I grew up, Beverly and Palmyra. Here's the problem. I've tried to share this proposal since we had our first meeting, Tom, with Dr. Nagy, who was appointed by this board as superintendent for, to discuss how this program could become a reality. It's not can it be, I've done it. I have yet to receive any feedback. I know this program will serve as a prelude to what we've been working on, what I've been working on for nine years, and what I've proven through Sonny, Sonny Boy Bianco, who was, uh, you know Sonny Boy from your time in the city. You know he was a, a, he fled Africa to save his head, and you know now he was a, a two-time Division Three All-American, finished third in the nation. He was involved in my program from his freshman year at RB. So it's not like I'm talking about, can this work? It does work. You are not going to redirect the gang-related culture in these targeted communities, which I've devoted my entire life to dealing with this population alone, unless you do it through proactive, proactive intervention programs. So here's what I'm humbly suggesting. There's absolutely no reason why this program cannot become a reality, because I've done it in the same format, in the same district, with the same base population. So what I'm humbly suggesting is Thomas Freeholder Director that you confer with Dr. Nagy and set up an impromptu meeting so I can meet with all the principals, with you, with the county administrator, and prove to them conclusively, one, value the program, two, there would be no cost factor, and if there is a cost factor they didn't budget, I've already made arrangements through Gracie for Change and a benefit concert that I've set up to cover any outstanding costs. And the last thing, as you know, I am not getting paid nor even seek one red cent for this venture. So the question is simple. Why am I being denied? Let's be real bad. You know why. So all I'm saying is, if in fact, you are servants of the people, and you listen to the will of the people, and you know that everything I'm saying is righteous, because I've proven it, put aside who I am, and allow me to do what I've done my entire professional career with this population. And I did it within five minutes. Thank you. I know you're going to call me. No, get a hold of Charlene right now, because I've got some other stuff that we need to meet about. Okay, thank okay. you. Yep, and Paul, just so you know, I didn't know about anything about Nagy. I just want you to know that my uh, last meeting we had together, I directed that at Burlington City like you told me to. I know, I spoke to John. Okay. And, and the last quickie on that, I also tried to have a discussion with a board appointed president of the Burlington County Special Services combined school board. Okay. I didn't get the time of the day. Okay. When I was the first all district teacher of the year. So, hey, what's that all about? Okay, Paul. Well, get with Charlene, though, okay? Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, let's see, Mark um, Halloran, is that correct? Good evening, everyone. My name is Mark Holler, and I live at 324 East Front Street in Florence, and I came last month to talk to you about the uh, tractor-trailer situation uh, along Delaware Avenue and Front Street. Uh, we're getting 70 a day, and there will be, there will be proceedings initiated to uh, establish a weight limit on that road, we hope. Uh, the citizens and I that live along this two-and-a-half-mile stretch, there are thousands of us, uh, but I came to you last month to talk to you about the special situation with the county's uh, contractor, AWS, Accurate Waste Systems, in that they're uh, moving in and out of town 18 times a day in tanker trucks hauling leachate to our sewage treatment facility. And I asked if this board or the landfill manager could contact AWS and reroute those trucks via uh, Route 130 to Dulles Lane and Up River Road and avoid this 100% residential area. Uh, this board directed me to uh, Mr. Dan Jemmy uh, that I spoke with about uh, 10 days following that meeting uh, and he um, related to me that there were two objections that uh, he had driven the route but that the drivers of AWS had objected that the uh, left hand turn out of the uh, Florence um, uh, sewage treatment facility was obscured by vegetation and that the vegetation would need to be cut down and perhaps the solicitor may have had an opinion that a variance needed to be requested of the adjacent property owner uh, to cut that vegetation down and to uh, restore full visibility. So what I've done for you tonight is I've uh, put all these uh, things down again in writing and I also want to share with, uh, for the public record, that I left with each of you the original document last month, but I had only so many copies, so I just want to bring this in. So I gave each of you five, Mr. Dan Jemmy, one, but I did not submit one for the public record at that time. That's what this is. I have one for each of you tonight, and the uh, solicitor, uh, that are the text of what I'm addressing. Um, and anyway, uh, so I paid a, uh, so the second thing was, uh, first was about visibility and the second was about, you know, how difficult would it be to cut this vegetation back. So I've done a little research on my own. I visited the sewage treatment plant, I took measurements of the roadway, the exit gate, I have pictures for you in this document, and I have a schematic of the exit gate here. And the, the, the long and the short of it is there's a full 1,600 feet of clear visibility all the way down the road. Uh, the little white box and the picture on the top that you can see to the left of the second utility pole is a 53-foot tractor trailer. Uh, and the, actually the paradoxical thing here is the second picture at the bottom shows the right-hand exit, which is the current route that the truckers are taking, is almost fully obscured by Florence's massive uh, welcome to the sewage treatment plant, which <coughs> sits on a berm and is shrugged around and so forth. And you can barely hear that van coming until it passed the sign, and that's about 50, 60 feet of depth from that curb line to the sign. So I assert that these two objections, the, the lack of visibility and the, um, uh, it, or just, and the, the need for a variance are spurious because I've interviewed road crews as well, and they say no problem. They, you know, we always trim 10 feet within the PSE and G in county right away by using a slope mower. And it's if you lift the blade and you go right along the, uh, the surface of the vegetation of the property owners, borderline and you take care of the vegetation. So as I said before, there's no difference in, in rates that AWS is charging you to transport this waste either to uh, uh, Mount Holly, Burlington, or Florence. So there's no skin off their back for uh, rerouting and Dulty's Lane is soon to be a county road anyway. So uh, I'm just looking for an update because I've, I've heard only, um, you know, some things conveyed second and third hand, but I also wanted to let you know that um, the initial instructions for these truckers to follow this route through two and a half miles of homes uh, was given verbally by, and, I, and again, this is hearsay, but some landfill personnel, which is just exit the landfill, get on County 656, which is Florence Columbus Road, and go straight for four miles. And, and that's the easiest way not to get lost to find the land, to, to find Florence's uh, sewage treatment plant. So, right, so they're intentionally going in to the neighborhood because it's uh, the easiest way in. And the truckers all confess to me, it's like, yeah, I've got to make a left on Route 130, I've got to go through two lights, big deal. And it's, the, it's the lazy way to go. So I'm just telling you that it's still insulting to see these trucks come through, which are your contractor, 
There's no economic reason that they would be uh, imperiled should they go an alternate route, and there's no visibility reasons uh, as the evidence that I've given. And if you look at this, finally, if you look at uh, pictures that I can um, text someone, they're too large to go through an email server, you'll find that those trucks need to um, move out of the exit gate, and they're over 50 foot long. So they have to cross into the opposing lane of traffic in order to commit to turn left or right anyway. They just simply can't get out without exposing their entire truck to river road traffic in both directions. So I just want somebody to call me and my neighbors and say, where are we on this? Because it really ought to just take a phone call to the company's owner. Um, and, and by the way, I wanted it also to be memorialized in their contract that gets renewed by June 30. It, it expires. So I kind of want to know where that is. And I just want to take a second to tell you that I emailed um, Marty Livingston at the traffic department and with a very long email about a law that I've uncovered, which is Title 1632 of the NJAC, and I've got a copy for the good counselor here. Uh, and this is legit. It's uh, enforceable, and it, it basically says the tractor trail is greater than 96 inches wide, can only travel on so many roads in the state, and got to overweight residential areas, or they can be ticketed. Uh, and I'd hate to see <laughs> the county's contractors ticketed for a service that they're providing to Florence. And it's not a cheap fine. So read it, call me. Thank you very much. And, uh, and I've informed my council about it. And so Joe, or rather Marty, uh, you got this. I don't think the rest of the board did, Mr. Poyton, in response to my, and I just wanted to publicly praise them if they're in the room. They're some of the most professional people I've ever met, uh, Marty and Joe, terrific, spend their time with you, explain things, and they're very helpful. And I, I really appreciate the work they're doing, helping us, um, helping citizens anyway, uh, sort through this weight limit thing. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Right. So how will I know? How will I? Who will I be contacted by? He'll he'll look at the law and hopefully uh, get with um, Nick. All right. He'll, he'll coordinate getting back to you. Thank you. Thank let's, you. Let's try another one. Should I ask the same question? Okay. Uh, Mr. Steve Young. Anyway, I can reserve my remarks to after Mr. Alexander speaks. Sure. Thank you. Sure. Um, good evening. Good evening. Uh, this is my first time. Um, Excuse me. I'm sorry. Can you put your name and your okay. town for the record? Oh, uh, Alexander. Alexander Bourne, Kettle, uh, Burlington City. Okay. Um, I am um, here representing uh, Born Builders as well as Neighborhood Redevelopment Cooperative Solution, which is, uh, it tends to answer a question of what the gentleman uh, was talking about in regard to uh, approaching the gang situation and the, you know, unemployment and all that. Um, so, you know, that's going to come down the line, you know, soon, very soon in regard to that. And um, we're doing, you know, real good steps in addressing certain things that need to be addressed, especially with young people that look like me. And, uh, you know, giving them an alternative than crime and, you know, poverty and all that other stuff. But I'm here tonight to uh, address you guys in regard to your county jail, which on May 20th to June 3rd, I had a chance to spend 14 days in there. I didn't commit any crime, but I was treated, you know, very badly. Um, the inhumane and, I, I mean, you wouldn't do an animal like that, you know? And I'm not sitting here saying that we, we have to put, you know, people that have been accused of crime into a hotel. I'm not saying that at all, but these are still human beings and I'm just let, I'm just here to let you guys know that I was not treated like a human being and I'm, I'm re, I want to reiterate for the record I did not commit any crime I was placed in a cell that was being con under construction the light as bright as it is right here was on all night then after that I got classified to a three-man cell where you're locked in. 
most of the day. In the three-man cell, you're exposed to another man's defecation, another man's flatulence, and another man's urination. So, the only way to get myself up out of that, that particular predicament was to refuse to lock in, which is what I did. So they kindly put on handcuffs and escorted me to lock up. So when I get to lock up, that's when they strip search me. Told me to bend over, cough, lift up my testicles and all that other, you know, stuff like that. While in lock up, every single day, your handcuffs are placed upon you and then they pull you out of the cell and they feel upon you, you know? All right, so that's, that's the daily movement. They do it every single day. Then came June 1st, Saturday night. I'm taking notes of every bit of the treatment that was given to me while I'm asking, can I get access to the law library? Can I speak to somebody in, in, in charge? They're telling me, shut up, I don't want to hear it. You're, you know, whatever. So Saturday night came, and they said, well, you got to, you got to, uh, I'm in lockup. They're bringing another person to be in lockup too. So I said, wait a minute. So now you're putting me back in a condition where I have to spell another man's defecation and flatulence. And I said, no, I'm not putting my hands through the, uh, through the food port. So upon that refusal, I, I received some stuff, some chemical substance in my eyes. I don't know if it was maize, pepper spray, or what it was. And then they, they, they jumped on top of me, dragged me out of the cell, dragged me down to the nurse's station, attempted to clean the stuff out of my eyes, but it, it wasn't a good job. So I went to the hospital after I was released on June 3rd. And I have the hospital report where it says something about conjunctivitis. I don't even know what that is. But that was what I suffered um, as, um, you know, the good guys over and ladies at the county jail. And I repeat again, I did not commit any crime. I was being held for whatever reason. So um, I am a person that wants to not have another young person go through what I went through. That's why I do what I do in the community, with the community development, with the teaching and training of uh, construction, as well as, um, you know, manhood training as well, to show these young men how to be men. I've made some mistakes in my lifetime, but I, I do not make those mistakes anymore because my mind is correct, and I want to go forward to help people instead of hurt people. Thank you. Thank you. of uh, in the consciousness of people who uh, feel no hope. Like again, I want to thank the people who come here about that pool. No disrespect to y'all, but people are dying from where I'm from. Absolutely. People are getting shot and killed. And uh, you just got to read your Burlington County Times to know that people are getting shot and killed. See, in our neighborhood, there is no recreation in Burlington City, none. This summer, we have to scrape and go to churches and ask, beg people they can help us get something for the kids to do, something, anything. So I come here to the Board of Freeholders again and explain that the mindset has to be seen. I have to bring you all to the mindset. I don't know when we're going to schedule the meeting, like I, from uh, uh, Freeholder uh, Hobson. 
to the neighborhood. She didn't go, she came, matter of fact, she did come in the neighborhood. She was on the street with me. She met some of the gangbangers, personally. She met some of the uh, elderly people, some of the complaints. She knows them. At the same time, I think this committee has to come under my flag, not a gang flag, under my flag of protection, whatever flag y'all can bring, and let the neighborhood know that y'all care, because they don't think y'all care. They think this is you get voted in, which they don't vote because they don't believe in it. Now, the kids need an opportunity. We know that. That's like a uh, like Mr. Greasy. I know him. He knows me. He like he's saying the project. I mean, it can be done through people who understand it. But I want to go into detail on what the inhumane treatment of that jail and the Burlington County uh, Justice Department or, or, or courthouse, the collaboration between the prosecutor's office, the public defender's office, and the judges, and the jail. The jail breaks them down, keeps them in their cell 23 hours a day, locked down. Detainees. Detainees, people who are not even convicted of a crime. They can't bail out because of some trickery of, of now it's a, new, it's a bail reform or whatever this thing. So now the constitution of you're uh, not guilty, you, uh, you, um, you're not guilty to proven. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So my thing is, it's just basically, it's some type of scam to break you in there to make you uh, 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 becomes discouraged and you take a plea bargain. When you come to court, the play prosecutor or your public defender say, look, how long you want to just sit in here? How long you want to get taking this? You might just take this little plea bargain. Then they get credit from that, from the prosecutor's office, they get a few cases. If they, look, we'll let you, we'll let, uh, we give you so-and-so, we give you this, like Monopoly. It's like monopoly being passed around in there. So I said that to say is, we need to go over to, I don't know the date, on the record, we need to go over to that jail. We need to come over to the courthouse, just sit in the courthouse and watch the treatment. Just listen to the conversation, because it's a free, I mean, it's a public off, but for them to know the free holders in there, maybe they might tighten up, because y'all pay their bills. They might tighten up over there. Because for real, Burlington County is notorious for, I mean, what is it, a 90% conviction rate? Besides me, I always win. Not bragging, but I fight. I do my research. And the grindiness that they do, it comes on paper, and you didn't tell the truth, you didn't tell the truth, and the jury doesn't believe you. <coughs> my name is Jamal Taylor, and I'm notorious over there for that. And they hate me now that I'm out the streets, they have no way to come to me. They have no way, I'm almost done. They have no way to pick on me anymore, but they try. But I said that to say, and I'm done after this, to the point where you've been voted in because people trust you. You've been voted in because you've been trusted. Like I said, I'm not going to put the load on Ms. Hobson like I told people from where we're from. She cannot do it by herself. Like my, like how these people are in here together about the pool. I don't know how many. They're together. My people are intimidated to come here. They are scared because they don't know if they might get locked up to say something. They're scared. Their hopes and dreams lie on going to the liquor store, doing drugs, cussing out their kids because they frustrated because their dad's sitting in that county jail and can't bail out and pay his bills. So I said that to say, if we actually do care and it's just not a word out of our mouth, hopefully we will come up with a plan. And that, that's all I got to say. Thank you. Young, and I'm the president of the National Action Network, South Jersey chapter, that's Reverend Al Sharpton's organization. 
also I'm with the Black Men United, which is a coalition, and I'm here with um, Brother James King L, as well as Brother Malik, and I'm here basically to follow up for what you just heard from Brother Jamar and Brother Alexander, and it's about solutions. The jail is so much money, taxpayers' money, whether it's state, federal, or municipal, or tax people, people's money that's being spent to incarcerate rather than dealing with the solution with our young people in the street so they won't end up there. But then to end up there, to be innocent until you even go to court and be treated in this inhumane situation is a problem. It's worse than slavery. Because the majority of the people were in those facilities, not by coincidence, but by design, are black or Hispanic. Majority of people that are putting them in there are mostly Caucasian and white. That type of atmosphere and using public dollars to incarcerate and create this type of slavery can stop. And it can stop by listening and communicating. Now we reached out to the ward to say, after this incident happened, let's meet. We want to view and go through the facility and find ways we can make it better with our taxpayers' money. We didn't get a call back. We're asking you, as the freeholders, like it was very eloquently said, you deal with the, with the purse, with the monies, with the people's dollars, whether to approve a budget for the officers there or the equipment there or not. So you play a major role. But we are saying as taxpayers and as human beings, especially as black people that's been oppressed so long, there's a way we can work together to solve this. But if we don't, look what we are creating in our communities. We are creating a war zone. So there are solutions to this, and we are just asking as Olive Branch to reach out right now to say to all of you, let's meet together. Let's communicate, and let's try to solve these inhumane situations so that our children and our youth can see a future in this country. Again, you can reach me. This, I'm going to leave my number for you as the uh, chairperson and the rest of you to reach out and have your warden return the phone calls, to even set up, because we want a tour. When we have this tour, See, government is supposed to be about transparency. We want to film it. We want everybody in this country to see where their money's and their tax dollars being spent. That's only fair. If you ain't got nothing to hide, let's do it. We would like for you to be a part of that tour. So that's the request. And, and um, we're asking it now on the record, can we do that? <coughs> There's a lot of different rules, regulations, you know, not only statewide, et cetera. We can have our solicitor here also work to see what can be done. Okay. And how soon can we have an answer to it? Because the longer it's going, the worse it gets. Mr. Young, we just became aware of it now. Can you give us time to process and see what it is? Speak to our administrators, yeah. our solicitors, and all stakeholders and set up a meeting. Sure. Our PIA will be in touch with your information. Is two weeks a good enough time? Is two weeks good enough? Like I said, I, I don't know the intricacies right now. That seems reasonable, well, but we'll depends on what they work on. Within two weeks, we'll work with we, we really appreciate it. Thank you okay. very much. Okay, that's the end of the names on the list. Is there anybody else? Good evening, freeholders. Um, my name is Ryan Greck. I'm with Highland Preservation Alliance. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you tonight. Um, I am here to talk about the uh, Southern Reliability Link Pipeline, which I'm sure is not surprising. Um, but first, I would like to uh, call your attention to a report that was released last month. Um, I have copies of the uh, summary. Thank you. 
for each of the three holders. Um, the whole report itself is huge and very dry. This is a two-page summary with a link on it. Um, um, this report was released by Oil Change International. It's titled Burning the Gas Bridge Fuel Myth, Why Gas is Not Clean, Cheap, or Necessary. More than just the commonly made argument about the leakage of methane, which is a greenhouse gas 87 times more potent than carbon dioxide in natural gas projects, the report details the reasons why natural gas cannot be part of any solution to the climate crisis. The, these reasons are, first, the current use of gas and oil, uh, not even counting coal, push us above the 1.5 degrees of warming. Additional fossil fuel use from new projects would take us way beyond safe climate limits. Secondly, switching from coal to gas doesn't cut emissions nearly enough to adhere to climate safe models. Both coal and gas need to be phased out. Wind and solar, thirdly, wind and solar are already cheaper than coal and gas in most markets. Fourth, natural gas doesn't need to balance, isn't needed to balance renewables portfolio when we have and are developing better technologies like batteries, storage, and transmission. And finally, building unnecessary fossil fuel infrastructure now, which is designed to operate for decades, will only lock emissions into 25th, the year 2050 and beyond. Given that New Jersey state law requires 100% clean energy and an 80% reduction in emissions economy-wide by 2050, it is imperative that each county in New Jersey move from natural gas and other fossil fuels. According to Lauren Stockman, who's the author of the report, quote, despite desperate attempts by the oil and gas industry to persuade policymakers that their products have a future in a climate safe world, a rational look at the data clearly shows otherwise. We simply have no more time to debate what all has already been settled. We must move swiftly to a fully renewable energy economy and leave all fossil fuels, including gas, behind." End quote. Currently, the New Jersey Board of Public Utilities an integrated energy plan is being developed to identify low-cost pathways to 100% clean energy by 2050. While the SRL pipeline would cost consumers $180 million, studies now show that a carefully planned combination of clean resources results in a lower cost energy system than the current mix that still relies heavily on coal and gas. New Jersey already has excess capacity in existing pipelines. In fact, during the extreme cold that we experienced from December of 2017 through January of 2018, which some may remember, there were 1.7 billion cubic feet of pipeline capacity unused. That's billion with a B. The highway master plan, which was passed and adopted by the freeholders about an hour ago, uh, H12 on the agenda, lists the objectives and strategies to maintain existing county highway infrastructure and modernizing it to meet current and future demands. One of the objectives listed in the master plan to achieve its goal is, quote, link transportation objectives to sustainable economic development, community development, and environmental protection, end quote. The specific strategy associated with that objective states, quote, protect air quality, the natural environment, open spaces, farmland, and rural quality of life, end quote. Environmental protections are listed as goals in your own plan about highways, of all things. Granting a road permit to New Jersey Natural Gas to build the SRL is not only contradictory to global climate goals, not only contradictory to New Jersey state energy goals, but even contradictory to your own highway plan that you just adopted. If the SRL were permitted to expand into Burlington County, the only one achieving their goal would be New Jersey Natural Gas's bottom line. You have the authority to do what needs to be done to achieve these goals and to stand up for the residents of Burlington County. Please do not allow the permits to the SRL to be issued. Thank you. Anybody else? Good evening, Christine Baum, 340 Arizona, Southampton. I wanted to bring it to the Freeholder Board attention that the corner of 70 and 206 in Southampton, we uh, the township runs a salt building for a dollar from the state, and that lot is crammed with county recycle bag, uh, 
bins, you know, the ones that cost $85 to $100 a piece, there's approximately 150 of them in there. They've been laying there now for seven months. I've been watching this month after month. The freeholder Tiber, come on, you should have been on top of this. You live out there too. So um, that's a lot of the county money just laying around. Not to mention, that is one of the biggest routes for people going down the shore. And it looks really tacky as a township and as a county to have the piles of blue containers against a uh, falling down salt building. So I wanted to bring that to your attention that perhaps the county could get their hands back on those. Um, if they're your property, um, then put them where they're not seen by the public because it's really an eyesore. So thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Ronald Allen. I'm a resident of Pemberton, uh, Burlington County. I'd like to bring your attention to what has already been discussed both tonight and for the last two or three years, and that is the closing of the Pemberton campus. Its facility, certainly being the aquatics building, also supports many other community needed services. I would ask the board and the members who in your family may have used these facilities, both for rehabilitation purposes, as we have many stakeholders, residents, <clears throat> who over literally last 20 years have used these facilities for those kind of rehab services. Deborah Hospital also can utilize the facility. The military can also utilize the facility. As we've already seen, most of the municipality's police come down and converge on this property for exercises. We would like to know what your actual individual interests are. As stakeholders, representative of our community, what is holding you back from making out outreach efforts to bring other parties to support the community? If we are going to sell the property to private interests, who may very well bring mixed housing, is it that there is a financial incentive to the county, which doesn't serve the long-term planning for the residents and the surrounding communities. Has anyone done a highest and best use analysis looking at the economic impact of these quick fixes, which New Jersey over the years has seen can destroy communities, whether it's malls, whether it's low high-rise, <coughs> uh, low mixed-use housing, specifically Route 68. My wife and I came here about 15 years ago. The mayor at the time was concerned that these mixed-use housing residents were going to negatively impact the community, which they have based on crime, use of municipal uh, rents, specifically uh, hospitalization, social services. So we're asking you not just about the aquatics, which is certainly self-contained financially, but also all the other ancillary services that this building, this facility can support. An example, kayaking. We've talked about um, training for aquatics. <coughs> We're talking about uh, the preservation of wildlife. All of these seem to be secondary in nature, yet, as we know, the arts, performing arts, the uh, recreational facilities, helps communities to stay healthy. So we ask you, if you're not a resident in this immediate facility, if perhaps your family has never used the facility, maybe you can think long term and look at some of the negative impacts, these quick fixes that some prefer, how that will negatively impact our communities. Because they are your communities. They are family and friends, relatives, I'm sure, have used or have traveled through. So we're asking you to think more broadly think more eclectically of its use and try to support an existing uh, facility and its services that can financially support itself, can be better utilized long term, its legacy, and most importantly, in its economic feasibility, where it will not be able to long term sustain these quick fixes, but rather help the community that it's already serving. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, is there anybody else? Hello. My name is Deborah Smith, and I live in Southampton, Burlington County. And I don't want to have to repeat it, what was already said, but I'm here about the SRL, Southern Reliability Link. Um, you know, I go up and down that road uh, where they're putting that pipeline in, and they're already, it's ugly. They're all alternating traffic. And from my um, understanding, um, you um, voted to let the road close. Um, I don't think the road should be closed. I don't think that uh, any of this should be approved. Um, there's still court uh, litigation in court, and uh, it's not needed. The other thing I wanted to say is that when we voted this new um, this new board of chosen freeholders in, we really had hopes that you would stand strong against this kind of thing because this was already looming, and I feel that. We are at a crossroad because it's time to stand strong against um, dirty fuel and, and really look at the environment. Um, I know there's a lot of other problems and I know there's a lot of pressure to, uh, to approve this and, and let this go through. Um, but I think that you should stand up for the health and safety of, of the citizens, of your constituents, um, and take a side. It seems that, that you don't want to really take a side. You're just kind of letting it ride. Um, I think that you have the power to be interested in, get involved, and take a side um, against this. And I know we've been back and forth about it. But it's very, very important for the health uh, and safety of, of all. Um, please don't approve the road closing, and, and please Get involved about this Southern Reliability Link. Um, they're putting that pipeline in, feeling like they're just going to do it. And if they get uh, fined, they'll pay it because they have deep pockets. Um, and nothing that the people that live in the area, any of us, and nothing that we say has any any bearing at all. And um, and we are the ones that suffer for it. So. Thank you for letting me have the opportunity to speak. Um, I still have a lot of hope for this administration. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, hearing none, I will close this portion of public comment. Uh, we'll now move on to comments by the three holders. Three holder fiber. Thank you, President. Um, the only thing I have is, uh, again, about the pool. We've, we've had people coming here for almost two years now. Um, we hear everybody's concerns. There's over 1,200 signatures, pushing 1,300 now. Um, there's been 40,000 visits per year. Uh, it's not 40,000 people, but it's 40,000 visits. It, it's, you know, it's, it's a resource that, that we have in the county that um, it serves everywhere from, to I've said this before, from toddlers to seniors. Uh, toddlers get their first swim in there and seniors do therapy. Uh, and everybody in between, high school teams, competition teams. Um, I, I just I just think that you know, it, it needs to be saved. We need to sit down and try to find ways to, to make it happen. And, and I would like tonight to again ask uh, to form an advisory board of a couple people from the county, a couple people from the college, and some of the residents that are um, concerned and see if we can figure it out. August 15th is coming way too quick. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you Freeholder Director. Uh, I'd like to, uh, to thank all of the residents that came out tonight uh, to share their viewpoints. Uh, whether they're ones that we share or ones that we disagree with. It's important that we hear from you on all sorts of uh, subjects, even the ones that 
uh, as was evident tonight, uh, can be a little uncomfortable to hear about. But we want you to know that we appreciate you all taking the time to come out here. Um, and I was a little disturbed to hear about people that might be afraid to come here uh, in some kind of fear. We want you to know this is, this is your facility. You're welcome here anytime. Uh, there's officers here to protect you. There's no reason for anyone to come here and feel, feel that they're, they're not safe. Next, I, I'd like to congratulate uh, all of the women last night that were honored uh, as the outstanding women of Burlington County. And I'd like to uh, uh, single out my colleague to my right here, uh, Freeholder Hobson, uh, for all the hard work that she put into this. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to attend. I was out of town at a meeting. But I was there in spirit. It was, uh, I understand it was a great night. And uh, again, congratulations to all of those that, that were here. Uh, and finally, last, I'd like to uh, wish all the fathers in the in the room a happy Father's Day coming on this weekend. And that's all, Freeholder Director. Thank you, Freeholder Austin. Thank you, Freeholder Director. Um, I too would like to congratulate all of the fathers and the women that we honored yesterday. It was a great program. More importantly, Christine Mullen, thank you so much. You are a complete rock star. She's the president of the Women's Advisory Council, and she did an amazing job. Um, it took a lot. It's, it was a labor of love. <laughs> so congratulations again to everyone. Thank you for everyone who participated in whatever way you did participate. Thank you very much. I'd like to remind everybody that we're having an economic development roundtable for mayors to participate in this Monday, um, 17th. Um, we're asking all local mayors to come out and share what economic development looks like for their town so we can formulate some, some grand ideas that we can um, possibly combine local municipalities along with um, county efforts. So that's going to be taking place this Monday on the 17th. Um, there's more information on our um, freeholder on um, our county page. Uh, if you if you can't find the information, uh, feel free to call the office and they will give you all the details. Um, happy Father's Day to everyone in the room, and thank you all for coming tonight. Everyone, come see you. Freeholder Singh, uh, thank you, Director. Yes, Happy Father's Day to me and every. <coughs> um, totally did not remember that coming up. Um, again, congratulations to Freeholder Hobson and the chair and all the county staff, uh, employees, everybody that put their heart and soul into the successful um, dinner last night recognition ceremony. That was really outstanding and I've been to few and I, by far um, th this was a really wonderful time. I think people really enjoyed it and uh, I really you know, enjoyed meeting all uh, women from all over the county. So that was a wonderful event. Um, also congratulations again to our appointees to the Emergency Services Advisory Board. Uh, thanks to the freeholders uh, for reorganizing and putting this all together. Um, I think we said it at the time, we value all disciplines uh, and we're really excited to welcome police onto a um, onto an advisory board uh, considering over 80% of the calls going out of the public safety department are always police and they didn't have any appointments on it. Uh, so we're finally very excited to have an equal uh, representation of all the disciplines. As you all know, if I have a fire emergency, uh, the police can help me, EMS can help me. I always say, you know, you need all of them depending on your situation. Um, so, and we're really excited to move forward with that board now. Um, and, uh, I was going to say, oh. <coughs> Just a correction, we do not appoint or uh, hire the superintendent at the county schools. That is not our uh, authority at all. I know one of the first kept mentioning it. Or the college, we do not hire the president. We have board of trustees, we appoint once every few years or you know, every once in a while, but we do not hire those and we do not have any control over those. I just don't want any misgivings about that. Um, that's uh, about it. Thank you, Director. Thank you. I want to echo uh, the board's um, congratulations to all the women who were selected. Um, I also was not able to attend, but I heard nothing but great uh, things about the event. I feel bad that I wasn't there, but hopefully I'll be there next year. Uh, once again, thanks to the efforts of Freeholder Opson and the, uh, the women. Um, I heard it was a great event. 
Uh, one thing I, I did want to uh, attend a uh, veteran uh, friendly uh, chamber, uh, it's actually the Veterans Chamber of uh, Commerce that we had at RCBC and um, during that uh, event we were recognized as the first uh, county friendly uh, veteran uh, county um, in the state of New Jersey. So I'm very, very proud of that. We're currently working to see uh, what we can do to uh, engage uh, veteran-owned uh, businesses as well as other uh, women businesses, small businesses. Uh, it's very in-depth. There's a lot of rules and regulations, a lot of state parameters that are necessary. Uh, we have to take strong consideration as to how we go about it, if we go about it. But uh, we definitely, as a board, um, support all those different entities and we're trying our best to make sure that we give every opportunity to everyone out there to engage the county in business. Um, I want to also uh, happy Father's Day to everybody and um, have a good evening. This time I'll take a motion for adjournment. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Thanks. Have a great evening, everybody.